Hi there, Natalie with you today with a new process video for Pink Fresh Studio. And this time I'm going to give you an idea on how to use the Noteworthy collection to create an Easter layout. And you don't need a specific um, theme collection to create any type of layout. So I'm going to give you a few ideas. I have a few pictures of my nephew a few years ago after his Easter hunt. So first thing I did is I actually drew some eggs um, on white paper and I'm actually going to fussy cut them with my pair of scissors. I could have just cut one but sometimes I tend to lose the shape of the egg so I thought I cut a few of them to help me guide um, the cut of the, uh, the pattern paper. But before I do that I'm actually going to add a little bit of yeso to my background and I'm using heavy cardstock for this because I'm going to add quite a bit of mixed media. So I'm just applying clear yeso just to prepare the area and I'm going to set this page to dry completely while I cut um, the eggs out of, part, out of pattern paper. So you're going to see that I'm just stretching the yeso and like I said I'm just going to set it aside to dry while I work on the rest of the layout. So my idea with the eggs is I want to use the papers in the noteworthy collection to create a row of uh, pattern paper eggs. Think of it as easter eggs they're usually colorful, usually tie dye. So I thought the colors were very festive because it's such a springy collection it's just going to bring um, that festive look to the page and I'm actually going to use I'm going to try to stay within um, I thought at the beginning sorry to stay within a masculine palette but I'm actually going to incorporate some purple and some of the violet just because of the colors of the collection and they're very springy they're very eastery so I'm just going to cut um, pretty much one egg out of all the papers I'm going to try to find solid patterns and when it came to um, the noteworthy collection has a lot of green in it but I couldn't find any paper that had that green so I went into the super cool collection and this is the cut apart uh, sheet so I'm going to cut one egg out of the B side of it so once I've cut all the eggs and I'm going to cut if I'm not mistaken is it five eggs yeah exactly five eggs uh, again uh, there is an assortment of the colors of the collection so once I have them ready I thought about it how can I add detail to them so I went and pulled the one of the essentials this is this um, the fillable tag with pocket and I'm actually going to use the fillable part which is the little insert that you cut the uh, details in the pocket I'm actually going to cut strips of paper with that detail and I'm going to actually glue it onto the X so I'm just going to show you I'm going to make sure that I cut um, kind of just fussy cut it I have to make it straight so I went and trimmed it with my uh, guillotine just to make the, the strip of paper straight I know it sounds redundant and then I'm gonna actually place the fillable part of the pocket um, in the in the little strip I'm gonna cut it but then um, it's too small so I have to cut it twice so all I had to do is once I cut it once I come back move the um, the little die a little um, towards the right or the left whichever way uh, just to make sure that I create a continuous line of um, the detail and then just put it through my machine and that's all it's gonna take once I have I'm gonna show you one and I'm gonna take it off camera to do the rest once I have it I'm actually gonna glue it right onto the center of the egg so I'm just using some uh, a little bit of glue to make sure that it secure it, it is secure on the center of the egg um, once I glue it I'm actually gonna fussy cut it just to make sure that I give it the shape of the egg now and this is where I got very technical not technical but I put a lot of detail into this page I'm actually gonna hand stitch each one of the eggs I just wanted to bring some texture and because there is such a, a large amount of color in the eggs I'll, by hand stitching with one single color it just kind of um, makes it not so colorful it kind of defines the edge of the egg too so in this case the purple one will get a prop a dark purple outline and the inside line will get like a minty color so i'm just like i said i'm gonna take it off camera and work each one of them but that's gonna take me time so what i'm gonna do 
in the meantime is I'm gonna add my mixed media to the background so that while the mixed media dries I can actually detail each one of the eggs so you're gonna see right now I'm just kind of um, setting up what I want it to look like and I like I said I want a row of eggs uh, they don't have to be straight I'm gonna play with them with the formation I want to create some movement I want to make the layout dynamic so I'm just gonna play with the position of the eggs once I'm happy with what it looks like are you gonna see that I'm gonna bring a pen so and lightly trace the upper part of the egg and I'm gonna make sure that you don't see it on the camera but I can see it because then it makes it easier for me to add the mixed media and to glue the um, eggs back after without having to guess and you know get all frazzled so all I'm gonna do right now is pull up my liquid watercolor the pink fresh studio and start working on the background so the way I've lined it up I'm gonna start with sky blue on the left and that's that soft um, blue color and all I'm doing is adding a little bit of the watercolor diluted it with a little bit of water because I want a soft um, background and I'm gonna add the watercolor onto the outline of the egg in such a way that I have a little bit of the watercolor peeking from behind the egg and then I'm gonna actually create drips of watercolor so what I do is I just add the watercolor lift up the paper make sure there's it's fluid and that's what adding the yes on the background helps because it just leaves uh, the watercolor or the liquid just kind of floating on top of the paper so it gives me time to lift up the paper tap it lightly on my surface and then naturally the liquid is gonna tend to fall down and create a natural drip so you're gonna see that I bring a little piece of paper and they just soak up the excess because I don't want the little drips to hit the bottom of the page. I just wanna wanna control how long the trail of the drip is. So once I've done the blue, I'm gonna set it aside for a little bit so it dries and sets, and then I'm gonna start working on the green. And you're gonna see on the green, I started with, um, I can't remember the name at the moment, but the lightest shade of green. And once I put it down, I realized that it's not the right shade. Um, the color that I'm using in the egg tints, it has more of a teal look of it. So once I apply it, you're gonna see that when you add yes, so this is one of the advantages of prepping your page, is that you can clean some of the work that you added so you're gonna see that once i put it down again i added my watercolor i lift up my page i lightly tap it on the paper um and then the drips form i'm gonna once i have my first coat i'm gonna start adding a little bit of the emerald green uh, sorry yeah emerald green and the aquamarine because then i have the combination of the right tone so i still didn't like it so i just went and kind of pretty much cleaned it a little bit with a piece of paper towel and then i'm able to actually bring more of them um what is it aquamarine mixed with um um emerald that's gonna give me more of the tone that i'm looking for so again i'm just gonna add my watercolor lift up the uh, lightly tilt the page towards you and then tap it and then you're gonna create the drips i'm gonna add some splatters and one of the things you gotta keep in mind is that i'm not adding lots of watercolor i'm just gonna try like i said to add the watercolor just so that it peaks from behind the egg and then i'm gonna again set let the green sit for a little bit i'm gonna work in the purple and to get the right tone of purple for the collection I mixed a little bit of the purple liquid watercolor with the bubble gum which is the pink tone and then it creates the soft violet that matches the color in the collection same thing with the yellow the yellow started with the plain yellow and then I realized that it was too bright the color that it, it's in the collection has a little bit more of um, a mustard tone so to get to that tone i added a little bit of the espresso watercolor which is the brown one and that's just gonna create a must a mustardy am i saying it properly the mustardy tone that you see in the yellow paper in the noteworthy collection um again i'm just gonna make sure that i create the drips like i said i'm gonna control the drip so that it doesn't hit the bottom of the page i don't want to have that elongated look i just want a little cascade of our drips a small trail and then um 
the last color i'm gonna add is the blue and the blue there's two blues in the collection the light blue and there's a darker blue and to reach that darker blue i'm actually gonna mix a little bit i think it's uh the blue tone with a little bit of black a tiny and that's just gonna create a smoky uh, tone of blue that you see in the collection so you're gonna see right now that i actually one of the things that i do when i work with mixed media is i don't cut the branding strip of the paper and that way i can actually add a drip or a drop uh, yeah, a drip or a drop whichever one of the watercolor or whatever mixed media that i'm using so that i can see what color it dries at once uh, i'm happy with the co the color that i'm using then i'm gonna apply it to my page so just something to keep in mind if you're working with watercolor don't cut the strip of the paper that way you have a perfect um place to try out the color before you put it on your background and again i'm just going to continue working um i'm going to take it off camera because it took me a while to create this and i'm going to extend the green the purple and the and the blue one just because remember my pictures are going to sit there now you're going to see that i bring my eggs after i hand stitch them um took me a while but i enjoy it it's therapeutic and i had to wait for the background to dry anyway so i just went ahead and hand stitch and what i'm doing right now i'm just going to start gluing the eggs in place so a few of them are going to be glued straight onto the page and some other ones the ones that are um because i've moved them so some of them are on top of each other in a way i'm actually going to add a tiny little bit of foam adhesive behind it just to give it that extra lift so once i have all the eggs in place i'm going to set them i'm um, actually one of the things you gotta uh, i did is i make sure they're secure and when you hand stitch you add dimension to the back of the egg so i make sure that i added the glue to the stitching so that it stays in place so while everything's set i went and back the picture um the two pictures one with one of the green uh cut apart paper has uh there's a cut apart card sorry in the collection so back one of the pictures with that and then the other one just with one of the papers that had all the colors and i'm just gonna set them right on the right hand side of the layout and i'm gonna start working on the title uh, i'm gonna use the large alpha to spell the word easter and i'm gonna I make sure that when i place the eggs i created the perfect spot to work my title right next to the pictures and then like i said i'm gonna spell the word easter with the large alpha and i'm gonna spell the word happiness with the mini alpha and the, i love mini alphas because they're perfect for you know layouts but even better for traveler's notebooks and something that i love traveler's notebooks so my mini alpha i i gotta be honest i bought like two more sets from my local scrapbooker and i have another two coming soon yeah that's how much i love them so i'm just you know writing my putting down my title and then i'm gonna go into embellishing and now uh, one of the things that i wanted to keep in this layout is i wanted to in a way color block and what i mean by color block is i want to add um yellow stickers to where the yellow egg is a uh, blue stickers with the blue stick where the blue egg is so it's just a way of adding embellishments of the same color as a major focal point in this case i have green mixed media or green watercolor with a green egg so i'm going to make sure that i have green details in that area so that's pretty much what color blocking is all about so you're going to see that i found this big uh, puffy camera in the puffy sticker so i'm going to put it right there to complete my title and just to cover the lens i don't think i think you see it later on there's a little sun in the puffy sticker and just because it's so happy and if you see my nephew smiling so cute so i'm going to add the sun instead of the lens then i'm adding just a few phrase stickers and some ephemera just to um create my little triangle within the picture i'm actually gonna i thought about bringing those wooden buttons and i have a hard time with them i don't know why so instead i'm gonna bring a sticker just to create the round shapes that i'm using a lot and i'm gonna use one of the big or the large res um resin um stickers or those big enamel dots in yellow um just to put there and then i'm gonna add a little bit of um enamel dots around it now there's some um the blue and the light blue that's sticker there that circle sticker the chipboard it's actually from my favorite story collection it just had the perfect color the perfect sentiment so i thought it was great to be there uh the blue the navy blue um 
Enamel dot is actually from the embellishment set from the Noteworthy collection and all I'm doing right now is just adding um, enamel dots. I'm going to add some enamel dots that match the colors of the egg. So purple and purple, yellow and yellow and so on. I'm going to add a little heart here when in the purple heart and I just found that in my stash and I think also in the yellow heart I, I had a small heart and again I found it in my stash actually I think uh, yeah I found it in my stash all I'm doing right now is just adding a few more enamel dots to the bottom of the title and I'm just gonna use colorful ones just because I have all the color of the letters there after that I'm gonna add my lines with journal right underneath the picture um, just the perfect spot and just to finish this layout i actually added a few drops of black ink just because i have the black in the picture the black in the writing and a few drops of white ink just to lighten up a little bit the dark spot especially because i forgot that i had yes on the background so when you add any liquid in it it tends to expand so when i added the two drops it just joined and became this big blob so a little bit of white ink on top of it just covers that and that's about it this layout did take some time it was a labor of love but i love how it turned out and i hope you try it as always like i always mention if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact me i would love to give you a hand don't forget to check out the collection um and also the dyes and the liquid watercolor in the shop you, you there is so much you can do with them uh, i love dyes i you know and i think they're so versatile as always don't forget to uh subscribe to the channel there's always lots of content being added thank you so much for joining me today and happy easter to you all take care